I've spent the last 10 years studying the masters of old, refining what I found and redefining karate for the modern age. My aim, to modernize the traditional training methods while maintaining the vision of the old masters. Whether you're a beginner or experienced karateka, let me take you on a journey of personal improvement and self-defense. Hey guys, welcome to lesson one of this modern karate series. In this lesson, we're just going to be covering some basic warm-ups and exercises to help you get ready for your workout. Nothing here is meant to be super intense. We're just trying to limber up the body and raise our heart rate a bit. As such, with each of these exercises, we're not doing a lot of repetitions. And also, I'll be introducing several levels of difficulty. Just choose one level that you're comfortable with. You don't have to do all of them. This video isn't really meant to be followed along with. Rather, I'd prefer if you got a notebook and took notes on every exercise you'd like to do and then go hit the mat and do it. Now let's get started. The first exercise we can go over is push-ups. I'm gonna show you a few progressively different push-ups you can do as you advance. Now, first off, if you can't do a push-up yet, that's fine. We're gonna start out easy. If you cannot do a push-up yet, what I want you to do is just come out into a plank and see if you can get just to this position and hold this progressively for 10 or 15 seconds at a time. And as you get better at that, you can start just lowering a little bit at a time until you get strong enough to progress to something like an assisted push-up. Knees on the floor. Uh, I don't call these girl push-ups, I call these assisted push-ups because we all start somewhere. And those would be, as you would imagine, just bending your elbows down and up. Try to keep your head forward back straight and keep your core tight down and up and then as you get better at that and you can progress move up to a standard push-up uh, again keep your back straight core tight eyes forward fingers forward and you want to do not a lot of those for a warm-up exercise the workout hasn't workout hasn't started yet we're just doing the exercise to uh, increase our heart rate but after you've gotten a regular push-up down, let's pro proceed forward onto our knuckles. And just like we're punching, we want to use the bigger two knuckles and thumbs forward, elbows turned inward, down and up, back straight, core tight. And we want to do knuckle push-ups to help strengthen our wrists and help us have good bone structure have this structure memorized for stronger punches in the future. All right, let's get started with core conditioning. As we do with the push-ups, we're gonna have a few levels of difficulty that you can choose from as you progress. Now, to get started, <clears throat> a few things I want you to keep in mind is to not put any tension on your neck. Instead, I want you to put your hands on your shoulders or just hover your hands next to your neck and keep a space about the size of a tennis ball between your chin and your chest. Now, for this first exercise, we're going to elevate our legs slightly and just try to bring our torso off the ground, like so. This is called a crunch. And when you do this, you want to focus on engaging your abdominal muscles, not your neck muscles. You want to go up and hold your shoulder blades off the ground for just a few seconds. After you're comfortable with that, you can put your feet on the floor. And again, hands either in front or up here, wherever. I think I usually keep mine kind of just out in front. And we're gonna do sit-ups. I'm gonna reach forward and try to keep my eyes on the ceiling, engaging more core muscles. And with any of these, we're gonna do around 15 to 20 of these at most, just to keep our heart rate elevated a little bit before our workout. After you're comfortable with the sit-ups, what we're going to do is put our legs out straight, put our hands out straight, and we're going to do V-sits. So I'm going to bring my shoulder blades off the ground, and I'm going to bring my legs off the ground, touch my fingertips to my ankles at the same time, like so. And keep your ankles off the ground the entire time 
that you're doing this exercise. There we go. So, that's core conditioning. Our next progression of exercises is going to start out with jumping jacks into plank jumps and do burpees. To get started, jumping jacks, pretty standard. One, two, three, and so on. For plank jumps, you're just going to bend down, hands on the floor, feet out, back up, and jump. I'll do one, two, three, four burpees. We're going to add a push up and a tuck under our jump. Plank, push up, tuck. That'd be one, two, three. Now that we're done with the preliminary exercises, let's work on a few more dynamic stretches to get warmed up. We're going to start with our lower back and our hamstrings. The first exercise we're going to do is called an inchworm. Now it's important with this that we keep our hips moving in an anterior tilt as we lean forward. So don't lean with your back. Keep your back actually relatively straight and lean with the hips as we move forward. And I reach for the floor here and I'm going to walk myself out as far as I can and then I work myself back up. come up one joint at a time and with this one if you can't keep your knees completely straight that's all right um, it's all right to bend your knees here to touch the floor and to walk yourself out and then try to keep your knees straight as long as you can going back up and then come up one vertebrae at a time like so now if you're comfortable with the inchworm and you do want a little bit more difficulty we can also do a Hindu push-up. It starts out the same way. I reach forward to touch the floor. I walk myself out into a plank position. And much like you would see in a yoga class, you're gonna bend your elbows, look up and drop your hips, and allow your spine to relax. And I'm then gonna put my bottom into the air and walk myself back up. So it's almost the same as the inchworm we're just gonna add in that little bit extra there to really stretch the hip. We're not holding this for a long time. Just about a couple of seconds at a time and just six or seven repetitions at most. Next, we're gonna look at either doing a side lunge or a cross -ex squat. For the side lunge, I would just take a big old step to the side Lean into this knee, away from that other foot. And you would do about six of these on each side. Now for the next level up of difficulty, what you can do is turn this foot upward and lean in here. This is called a cross squat. Going in, stretching out the hamstring and the inner thigh you do about six of these on each side. Moving on, our next set of exercises is gonna be targeted at rotating the torso, and then we'll work at the arms as well. So first, we're just gonna do some twists. I'm gonna put my hands out in front, keeping my feet planted, but not locking out the legs. You wanna actually keep your knees bent for this. And I'm going to turn to the side one, the side one, the side two, the side two. Now notice with this, I'm keeping my head aligned with my torso and just turning and letting my lower abdomen do the rotating. I'm trying to keep my hips actually in relatively the same position. After we do our twists, I'm going to go just forward and backwards with the arms about six times each. For our last exercise, we're gonna go over what's called a tabletop twist. For this exercise, sit on your bottom 
with your fingers forward. We're gonna push up through the hips, really activating the glutes. Then reach over the top and really stretch out your obliques here. And then go to the other side. About two seconds each time. You can do this about six times on each side. Make sure you look up and over your shoulder towards your fingers are reaching. And that's it, the tabletop twist. Now you should be ready to go on to your next lesson.